Welcome guys, this is Ola from Stop Me Old Channel and I'm back with another Life is Strange video. Now, what I want to discuss today is actually Nathan Prescott. I guess it's more of a who I want to discuss today about. Nathan Prescott. Now, he's a figure that you either like or you hate. I wouldn't go for love. That's, I think, too strong of a word. I've been meaning to make that video for a while now, but I don't know, lately I caught myself thinking about him. Maybe because I've been thinking about Life is Strange itself, and that's all because Farewell episode that made me a bit sentimental about the original game. Now, the idea about this video is that I want to prove to you or show to you that Nathan Prescott is actually not as bad as some people would think. There are so many theories about Nathan and honestly I don't really want to summarize entire game's plot because I, I, I'm certain you will know it. I don't really want to be boring about this, I just want to focus on my impressions on Nathan and why I think he's not as bad as people think he is. Now let me start with saying that I am aware that he's sort of responsible for Rachel's death. I am aware of that. I am aware that he is partially responsible for Chloe's death. And I'm saying partially because, you know, he either killed her or didn't kill her. I guess you could wonder what's the point of explaining him at all, but it's just part of my personality to always explain people and to always justify their actions. You know, even if you'd have a, some sort of mur murder, I'd still say, oh, you know what, he was beaten up as a kid or something. I'm just not very strict about people. I'm not very black and white about things. So I want to see Nathan as a person that was a victim himself. Now, before I get to that, let me briefly remind you that there are various links in the video's description. For example, for the Discord server that I set up. And I encourage you to join it because it's a pretty fun, nice community. And some other social media like Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram and all that. If you want to discuss anything, that's the best way to contact me. Nathan Prescott. I think it's best if we briefly start with his uh, sort of a bio. So, Nathan Prescott, he was born on the August 29th, 1995. Uh, he was a student at Blackwell Academy. Throughout the game, he's associated with selling drugs or with being mentally unstable and being in therapy and also being part of the Prescotts. Prescott family that runs entire Arcadia Bay, pretty much. He's a son of Sean Prescott, so the main Prescott guy. He's a very powerful, very rich man. And I believe that he's part of Nathan's problem, actually, but I'll get to that later. Now, since spirit animals are sort of an important thing for that game, for Life is Strange and Before the Storm, I think it's safe to say that Nathan is actually a whale. Now, first of all, what Max found in his room while walking around the room, as she usually does, for God knows what reason, uh, she found a tape or like a CD or I don't know, probably a CD with whales songs that's one thing but then the other thing whale is like the biggest animal in the entire world it's sort of like sean prescott in arcadia bay then again when we saw whales i think it sort of symbolized the prescott fall down that was about to happen in the arcadia bay but that's just a brief mention that's not really important if it's a whale or not a whale although it is a whale okay so throughout the game we can actually see I would say three versions of Nathan. First version, that's the Life is Strange Nathan. I think the most mean version. The version that we don't really like as much. He's pretty aggressive, he's a bully, he's treating other people as if they're crap. He's talking down to people. He's acting as if he was entitled, as if he was better than other people just because he has the money and the power and all that. But to me, it just seems like it was a bit of a pose. We know that he's friends with Victoria, we know that he's part of the Vortex Club, so like the elite club of Arcadia Bay. We know that he doesn't like people like Max in that particular version, because in other versions apparently he does. We know that he used to hang out with Rachel as well, he knew her. And we also know that he's an artist, so he's taking nice photos and he's an art collector and all that. He has issues, like pretty strong issues. He's going to therapy, he has some sort of mental problems and he is in need of a father figure in his life. He did kill Chloe, sort of. Later on we learn that he actually has this thing that 
I guess he triggers or his body triggers. So it is possible that his finger only triggered. I mean, I don't believe that he was trying to kill Chloe. I believe he was trying to threaten her. I don't actually believe that he wanted to do any of the things that he did. I mean, the bad things. But I'm gonna get to that. That's the Life is Strange version. The dark Nathan version. The one that's mean and he's easy to hate. But you know, the way I see things, the easiest thing to do is hate on someone before we even get to know their point of view. Now before the storm, some people do not consider before the storm canon. I consider it a canon, regardless of the company that made it, doesn't matter to me. Even though there are some inconsistencies, I guess we have to live with the way it is. Nathan was a bit nicer in Before the Storm. We saw more fragile side of him. He was bullied by Drew, who ruined his project, his school project. He was trying to fit in. He was trying to join the football team, I guess, to sort of fit in, to be accepted. And that's just like... It just shows me that he had some issues, that he had a complex, that he, all he ever wanted was to be liked and accepted. Of course, he had this sort of an egomaniac thing going on. And I guess he wasn't adjusting too well. I suppose it would take a certain circumstances for him to become a normal guy. It's just that I think that if it was another person under the same circumstances, maybe the person would turn out okay. But Nathan, he just didn't handle it all too well. Now, before the storm, Nathan, two things made me think that he's actually a pretty decent guy without, you know, killing people. First of all, his relationship with his father, that certain conversation that Chloe could hear when he was bullied by his father, I suppose, before the Tempest. Now, his father, Sean Prescott, forced him to become part of that show because it was a popular thing to do at the moment and he wanted his son to be part of the you know main events around Arcadia Bay so he forced him to do that pretty much unlike a dead poet society movie if you've seen that uh, there was a guy there he was actually in love with theater and he wanted to act but his powerful father told him not to so yeah I guess that's a bit weird but I don't know never been a powerful father myself so I don't know what they're thinking I felt sorry for Nathan. I mean, listen to that. When will you learn that this isn't about you and your problems? This is about the Prescott name. My name. You will not embarrass me. Nathan. Yes. Good. Now. And then the sweet thing happened, Samantha. She was supporting him. You know the scene after the Tempest where Nathan was left alone there? That was heart melting. That was amazing the way Samantha waited for him and then the way he smiled. That was pretty sweet. I believe this was the true Nathan. Now in my gameplay, the way I handled things, Nathan ended up with Samantha. You know, underneath the tree reading books. That was kind of cool. I know that for some people it never happened, but I don't know what I did to make it happen. What was the thing to determine that? I'm sure there are some sort of YouTube walkthroughs to make it happen, but it is possible. Now, I'm not really certain what happened to Samantha after Before the Storm and Before Life is Strange. If you know, let me know. I've been trying to find it out, but I just, I didn't. Now, if you think about the role that was actually designed for Nathan in, in The Tempest, that's actually pretty crappy. He was playing Caliban. Caliban is the son of uh, the witch Sycorax. He's half human, half monster, after his island becomes occupied by Prospero and his daughter Miranda. Now Caliban is forced into servitude. That's pretty obvious what the developers were going for, picking Nathan as Caliban, so like a monster figure, forced into servitude. Perhaps even because of Mr. Jefferson. That's before the storm, Nathan. Third Nathan, I suppose falling into life is strange category, Nathan. That's the Nathan in alternate reality. I believe that's the true version of Nathan. He's chilled, happy, relaxed. He's friends with everyone, he's friends with Max. He's pretty happy. Now, it remains unclear why exactly did that happen? Because the only thing that was different was actually William being still alive. How did that influence Nathan? I have no idea, but if we learned one thing from Life is Strange is that minor things can influence big events, so I guess it did somehow. 
As I said before, he's into art. He takes pretty nice photographs if you have a look at them. He has a movies collection. So he's not a dumb guy. He's not your typical boy. He's a smart, fragile, I guess sensitive person. So he took it all very hard, the way his father bullied him, the way other people bullied him, the way he was, the way he was shaped. Drugs influenced him as well. He's associated with Frank, with Rachel, with, with all those people that were involved with drugs. Nathan was abused mentally, maybe even physically, by his father, Sean Prescott. He was bullied as well, and you know that people who are bullied often turn out to be bullies later on in their life. There's always a reason for people's behavior, the way I see it. Very rarely it happens that a guy or a girl from a normal, usual house turns out to be a villain. And I don't actually think that Nathan was a villain. Now, having all these issues that I mentioned, Nathan met Jefferson. We know that Nathan wanted to be a photographer. He was into art. It was actually this dark expressionist art. It was not really cheerful and happy. But then again, art doesn't have to be that way. He met Jefferson and Jefferson filled in the hole in his life, the father figure position. We know that Nathan was crazy about having a father in his life. If you have a look at his room, the stuff that we find, the best son in the world thing that he keeps on his wall, that itself tells me that he wanted to have a father, a father that actually loved him for who he was, not because he was a press cut. Jefferson used him. It's, Nathan was a easy person to use for the reasons that I already mentioned. Nathan was influenced by Jefferson and ended up doing whatever Jefferson told him to. So like Jefferson was taking full advantage of his mental issues and his bad relationship with his father and he became a father figure to him, sort of. He manipulated Nathan so that he could lure girls into the dark room and drag them for Jefferson's twisted photo shoots. I guess Nathan wanted to take photos the way Jefferson did, even if it took some sort of sacrifice, I don't know what happens in that sort of a mind, but maybe the way they see them it was a sacrifice necessary for art. So he was helping Jefferson, it's just that I don't believe he actually wanted to kill Rachel. He was just doing it for the sake of taking these photos and for the sake of pleasing Jefferson because he wanted to be accepted by him. Maybe it was Nathan that actually dragged Rachel? We're pretty certain that it was, but then again we saw this photo with Nathan and Rachel being dragged and it was both of them on that floor. Now we don't know if Nathan was actually dragged in that photo or that Jefferson told him to pose that way. Probably could be both. Like he told him to drag himself and then just lie there or whatever. That's pretty creepy, like Jefferson really sucks. But yeah, maybe it was Nathan that killed Rachel, if you look at it physically speaking. But it was Jefferson responsible for that death, 100%. The way I see it, Nathan didn't actually know that Rachel was dead. When he saw Max wearing Rachel's shirt, he thought that it was Rachel. Now why would he think that? Unless he thought that Rachel was still alive, only missing. Regardless of how I feel about Nathan, people do get punished for bad actions and for doing what they're not supposed to do and for acting morally ill, I guess. Nathan was punished after all. He either died, killed by Jefferson himself, or he was arrested. Now, I believe that if he was arrested, then eventually he would get re-socialized in the prison. Maybe he would turn out all right. Maybe he would even meet Samantha again. That is, if she's alive. I don't believe he was a bad guy. I don't believe he deserved to die. Maybe he just needed some help. More help that it was already provided for him. More help that Sean Prescott provided. Because we know that any help that Sean Prescott provided, it was just enough to make it look like he's helping him, but also enough not to actually help him. When Nathan was about to get killed by Jefferson, he actually called Max. It was a heartbreaking call. If you listen to that. Max, it's, it's Nathan. I, I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. I didn't want to hurt Kate or Rachel or, or I didn't want to hurt anybody. Everybody used me. <laughs> Mr. Jefferson is coming for me now. All this shit will be over soon. 
Watch out, Max. He wants to hurt you next. Sorry. Now it shows me that he actually cared. That he wanted to fix things. That's the last thing that he did in that timeline. He fixed things. I found that photo as well. I don't know who actually made that. I couldn't find it. So if you know, let me know. I'm gonna credit the person, but it's very sad. I just feel like he deserved something a bit better than actually happened to him. That's pretty much it. Now I realize I might get criticized for my approach, but I am aware that many Life is Strange fans feel the same way. Now if I confused something or missed something, do straight me out. As I said, uh, there's so much information about Nathan. It was hard to gather it all up and sort of create a whole picture, which is what I wanted to do. Create a whole picture of Nathan's behavior pattern. The way he was bullied, the way he was mistreated, the way he became a bully, the way he needed a father figure in his life and found that in Mr. Jefferson. I guess people were drawn to Jefferson. Maybe that's the reason why Rachel was as well. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already for more, g more gaming videos. I'm going to play the 400 days DLC, the Walking Dead one, so stay tuned for that. And of course, I'm going to actually record that Q&A. That's, uh, that's so very late, which I apologize for. Have a good weekend, guys. Take care of yourselves. This was Ola from Stop Me Old Channel. Bye.